Hello, and welcome to Addiction Free, the traveling TV program. You know, I really appreciate it when you turn into this program. And if this is your first time watching it, welcome. And I would love it if you would text somebody, call them, and tell them we're on the air because this program is all about getting testimonies of those who have been set free from all types of addictions. And then at the end, I give a salvation message. And the reason I even love doing this is because I'm a former addict myself and uh, I just love how God transforms lives. And today I'm at Conway, Arkansas at the Harbor. Now this church is doing an amazing thing here. They're, they have a prison outreach that they, that they go to the prison once a week and then their church is an extension. They're opening up a home here for women coming out of prison. And I'm, my, I have Laura Lease here with me today. Hi, Laura Lease. Hello. I am so glad to be able to interview you. You know, her pastor is not able to be here today, Pastor Larry Ward and Dana Ward. And uh, but they have given me the privilege to still come and minister here today. I got to preach, and uh, Laura Lee is going to be telling you about what this program here that they're doing at this church, and then she's going to be sharing her testimony. So, Laura Lee, would you look into the camera and just tell the people what's happening here at the harbor and and all the amazing things that actually is about ready to happen? Yes, ma'am. I sure will. Hey, I'm Laura Lease, and I am from the Harbor here in Conway, Arkansas, and I'm so excited to be a part of this church and about um, what we do here. Um, I, our church is an outreach church. We have a church full of people that have overcome addictions, that have had struggles in their life, that have some really devastating, heartbreaking things that have happened to them. But God has already done a work in their life, and they're a testimony. He is raising up an army in our church. And I'm so excited. Different people with different talents and abilities he's bringing in. What the devil tried to destroy, he's changing lives. And he's bringing them to our church. And I'm excited to be a part of that. We're like a family here at the harbor. And one real exciting thing that's going on that's about to take place is in about a month, we'll be accepting girls coming out of prison. It's called the Harbor Home for Women. And I could not be more thankful to be a part of that as I myself have been in a place where I was desperate for love and acceptance, and I needed a place to come to, be, to get healing and recovery. And that is what this home is going to be. We are going to be accepting people coming out of prison. We are going to be helping them find jobs. We are going to be allowing them to live with us as we love on them, as we teach them about Jesus and about having a relationship with Jesus and about restoration. We're gonna be able to get down on the floor with these girls and hug them and cry them and love and watch them change, watch God do a transformation in their life and see how they flourish. And we're so excited that that's gonna be coming up here. We know that God already has in his mind who he wants to send here to our church. Thank you, God, that I'm gonna be a part of this wonderful ministry. And now what we'd like to do is show you some pictures of what God is doing here uh, in our harbor home. Well, thank you for letting me share my testimony. Um, you know, I never thought that I would be here today. Um, there was a time in my life that I remember being locked up in jail and, remember, and thinking, God, if there's any way I could just get out of here, I would love to take my life because I don't deserve to live after everything I've put my family through, after everything I've put my kids through. And let me just start out by saying that um, I was raised a preacher's kid, and you know, you've heard all those things. Well, we're not surprised about preacher's kids. Um, but you know what? I know that God had a calling on my life, and he had a plan for my life. But here's what, here's what the thing is. I was raised in church. My parents did all the right things. They were faithful to God. They were called into the ministry. But I never, ever, ever had a relationship with God myself. And I just knew how to play church. I knew what to say. I knew all the Bible stories, but I never had a real relationship with him at all. As a matter of fact, I never opened up the word at all. 
And um, as I grew older and became an adult, I began to make some really, really poor decisions. Um, I had a low self-esteem. I really, really suffered a lot with self-hatred. And um, I thought nothing of myself. I hated myself. And um, I had one marriage failed after the next. And um, I struggled with my appearance, what I thought about myself, how I looked, you know. And, and I had heard one time that you could actually um, try crystal math and you could lose weight. Not believing that, well, actually believing that lie. And I tried it. And what it did was it took me to a place that I never thought I would ever, ever be in my life. Um, I had had two beautiful children from my first marriage. And Crystal Meth became, it became Lord of my life. I began to do whatever I had to do to get high and to stay high. It wasn't no time that I was a felon. Um, I went from county to county to county with just destructive, destructive behavior of a crime spree. I lost my children to my parents, and I was locked up in jail, and um, you know, that's when I was thinking, just let me out of here, because I've gone too far, I can't come back, Satan controls my mind so much, I cannot, I, I just can't even, even if I wanted to cry out to God, I couldn't, but while I was sitting in that jail cell, I opened up the word of God, not expecting him to do anything for me, but just to get my mind to stop replaying the tape and reliving the memories of how it was that I got here in the first place. And so I began to read the word of God. So while I was sitting in that jail room floor, replaying that tape, I opened up the word of God. And it's like he just took me to another place. I felt the presence of God immediately. Mm. And you know, instead of sending me to prison, like they had told me that, that I was supposed to go to prison. And instead of doing that, they sent me to a place called Potter's Clay in Hot Springs. And that's where I met my spiritual mother, someone who loves me more than any human has ever loved me, and that's Elizabeth Brakebill. And while I was there, I, I just, she showed me how to have a relationship with Jesus. And I got on fire for God. My life began to change then, and God began to give everything back to me that I had ever lost, what the devil stole from me. I began to work for her. I got out. I shared my testimony. I traveled all over. For reasons why I can't even explain, I went back to using crystal meth. I began to make poor decisions. I began to neglect my walk with God, my relationship with him. And I ended up not only back in the same place that I was before, but actually even worse than it was before. As this time, I watched my daughter at the age of 14 herself struggle with addiction. While I was doing my thing, she was doing her thing. And he destroyed, the Satan ended up trying to destroy her life. And I tell you, the thing that turned me around was the day that I saw my daughter walking up when she was cuffed, she was in shackles, and she was walking up to face the judge. And I knew at that point, I knew that something had to change. And I ended up going in and telling her probation officer, it's not just her, it's me. I am a part of the problem. And so they court ordered both of us back to Potter's Clay. And that's where, you know, I'll never forget when I went back to Potter's Clay. I had so much guilt and shame. I didn't want them to see my face and see that I had messed up again when they were so proud of what God had done in my life. And they, you know, I just didn't want to be a disappointment to them. But you know, they welcomed me with open arms. They loved me. <laughs> And, you know, I'll never forget that Miss Liz told me, you know, this time I will not be accountable. I'm fixing to do whatever it takes. I will not be accountable to God. Whatever it takes to see your life completely transformed, that's what we're going to do while you're here because God has sent you back to me and now with your child. And let me tell you something. I'll tell you the prayer that I prayed while I was there is because I, I just didn't want to go back to where I came from. And I prayed this prayer. I said, God, transform me to the bone. Let nothing inside of me, leave nothing inside of me that doesn't please you. I want to be changed. I want to be transformed. I don't want to go back to the person I was. And, you know, that's exactly what he did for me. And as I grew closer to him, <laughs> everything began to change. And now I just got on fire for God. I fell in love with him more than I ever have before this time. And I remember telling God, 
God, this time it's got to be, it's either this or die. And let me tell you something. He never, never, never made me feel like I wasn't worthy of his love. He took me right back up into his arms. And through the Miss Liz's touch and her um, her love for me, I could see that I was worthy of love and that I hadn't messed it up and that I hadn't gone too far, that I could not be reached. And now my daughter is giving her testimony. She dances for the Lord. What the devil tried to destroy, I also have another child. Um, he tried to destroy our entire family. And now God is using all of us in ministry. And I'm so thankful to be a part of that. And not only that, but God showed me that a woman like Liz Brightbill could love me. And now she is my hero. That's what I want to be. And that's why I'm here at the harbor. I want to be that for the women that come here. Hi, my name is Janice, and I go to church at the Harbor. I'm going to start off by telling you a little bit of my childhood, how I got into my addiction, and how God saved me from my addiction. As a child, I was beat severely by my mother. When I was in the third grade, my mother picked me up from school and brought me home, and she beat me almost to death. My dad came in from work. At this point, he had to she had told him that the school called and she had to come pick me up because I fell off the merry-go-round. The next morning, my dad took me to school and he wanted to know why I, I looked the way that I did. And the school informed him that I was fine. There was nothing wrong when my mother came and checked me out of school the day before. For the first time, I saw my dad strike my mom and he grabbed a suitcase of my clothes and he took me away. My parents got a divorce, my mom got the other two sisters and my dad raised me. He raised me as a single parent where other little girls were playing with Barbies and dressing up and wearing makeup. I was wearing sweats, blue jeans and working on cars. But I loved it. Every moment I spent with my dad, I loved it. He raised me in church. I got married at 16 had a baby at 15. I raised my family in church. Four years later, I had another son. My husband began to get abusive with me, and I thought that was seeking love. You know, having looking for mother's love in a beating, I grew up thinking that's what I needed. Well, after 19 years, I finally got a divorce. A year later, my dad passed away after a severely bad, bad battle with cancer. And when I lost my dad, my world crumbled. My mom's an alcoholic. She was so mean to me, she abused me. My dad never said a bad word about nobody. So that's when I become angry at God. God, why could you take my dad away from me and leave this awful woman on this earth? I never understood it. So my daughter-in-law at the time says, Mom, here, try Crystal. She's not going to hurt you. She's going to make you feel so much better. You're not going to feel a thing. All your cares and worries are going to be gone. So at that time, that's when Crystal Meth became my best friend. I got addicted to it. I got into selling it. I got into making my own prescriptions on the computer. I caught a forgery charge where I ended up having to go to prison. I got out of prison, out of boot camp, having to parole into the state of Arkansas and having nobody to go to. One of the girls in boot camp gave me a family member in Pine Bluff that I paroled out to. I had no idea, complete strangers. It lasted about a month till I absconded and went back to Oklahoma. Again, I got arrested and brought back. Lasted about 30 days here. I went back to Oklahoma. I kept going back to my addiction, back to my addiction, and back to my addiction. My mother passed away three years ago. I went back to try to help out with them things. I caught a new charge in Oklahoma where I did nine months in the county jail. Arkansas's parole never found me then. I stayed out of the system. I got out. I stayed here. 
finally they arrested me. My little sister turned me in because she was concerned for me at the time. I hated her for it, but I know now she did me a favor. So they arrested me and brought me back here. They brought me back to the parole office, and they sent me oh, out on the street with nothing, waiting for a bed in DCC. Once I got to Pine Bluff, we had nothing but spiritual. That's all we could read, spiritual. I wasn't into spiritual. I was still so mad at God. I found a little bitty thin book called Living Isaiah 3018. That book changed my life forever, forever. I got out. I got married. I have a most wonderful husband. I have a wonderful life. God has blessed me with my own business, with my health going down. I have to wear braces when I work, but he just, it's like he gave me new legs. God has just been so gracious to me since I repented, got myself delivered, and gave myself wholeheartedly to him. For he is my savior, my deliverer, and my life. Hello, my name is Jessica Hooks, and this is my husband, Alan Hooks. Um, I'm going to start off by telling you a little bit about me. I was born in Nashville, Tennessee, and I was a Methodist minister's granddaughter. So I grew up in the church. Um, I grew up also in an alcoholic home. However, it didn't ever stop us from trying to do right. Um, my parents always have loved God and have tried to do the right thing. When I started falling into drugs and depression in middle school, my mother saw fit to send me to a rehab, a juvenile boot camp, trying to help as best she could. Um, there I gained more hatred for everybody and more embarrassment for myself. So I became a very promiscuous. Uh, my family disowned me. I got married at 18 and became an adulterer. And in that affair, I gave birth to a little boy that was outside of that marriage, which led to divorce, which led to more drugs. Um, it wasn't shortly after that I felt inadequate, unequipped for motherhood, and I uh, gave both of my children away. Uh, to family members. My mother took my youngest son and I dove head first into cocaine in Florida and I, I didn't stop. I ended up having a third child and I gave him up for adoption from birth. God sent me a word then and he told me that for my, the, my adulterous ways that my seed will be scattered from the east to the west, and currently they are. He saw fit to incarcerate me in 2009 in a federal holding facility in Florida, and that is where I met the Lord. That's where my hunger for the word came, and my life was saved. After that, I was taken out. I did a year there and was released. My father drug me to Hot Springs, Arkansas and said, this is where you need a new fresh start. With my grandmother, who is an 83-year-old Christian woman who just loved on me. I'd like to say that I got it right then, but I didn't. Um, once again, I fell into methamphetamines, and that is kind of how I met my husband, which um, led us down a very rocky road, nevertheless. Um, in 2011, I was arrested for a DWI after leaving a motel room coming to see my husband, and it was completely distorted as prostitution. Um, I w when I was incarcerated on that charge, I made one phone call to him, and I said, I don't want to spend the rest of my life in prison, and that's where this is leading. So do you want to get clean with me? From there, we made our first attempts in AA and NA, which led me back to Potter's Clay. Um, 
at Potter's Clay, Miss Liz loved on me and taught me that God gives, he restores, he gives sound mind, he gives hope and restoration. There, we decided shortly after the graduation to become married and to live for God. Since then, I have become worshiping through dance. I call on other girls for advice, other women that have been there, and I just love the Lord. Let me tell you a little bit about my childhood. Uh, I grew up, uh, my dad was a Marine, my mother was a dirt farmer. My dad left by the time I was eight. I was using drugs. By the time I was 10, I was locked up. I've been in 11 different prisons. I've been from Arkansas to Florida to St. Louis. Uh, when I was 49, I met my wife, Jess. Uh, of course, it was in a drug deal, and uh, we, uh, I don't know where, they, where to go from this because uh, it was just one of God's plans for me to uh, see the way because, like she said, one night shortly after we met, she was locked up. I was locked up, but they let me go for a smaller charge. And uh, anyway, she called me from jail, and uh, I told her, give me about three days to think about this because I never thought about getting clean never thought about God, never never considered that because I didn't know there was another way. I was raised by nine convicts, and I spent my whole life not knowing about God. And I have to say, by, by this, her words, I owe her so much, just getting clean. We did do the NA, the AA, and we failed ourselves. It wasn't the the uh anybody failed us we just couldn't stay focused we didn't know that god was going to keep us sober and that all the sponsors in the world that couldn't but god could and we know that today we are at the harbor we were brung here through god's will we worked through god's will uh just a few months ago i was getting out of a jail in Shreveport, louisiana Today, I have a business, I have a wonderful wife, we have our child back that I said that I would, that was told I would never, ever get to see again. We have people that love us, we surround our people, self with people that love us, at work, and home, and here, and I just want to thank God for all he's given me, for the blessings he's given me today. And that's about all I can say. Thank you. So I would like to lead you in a prayer right now. If you would like to give your life to the Lord and have that peace, you know, I'm not saying your problems are going to go away because you're still going to have problems. But here's the thing. You don't have to do alcohol or drugs anymore to find the peace. You don't have to sleep around to, because you feel lonely because God is with you. He's right there with you the whole time. I know you. there's many of you that have been hurt through your childhood. I was molested by my dad, gang rape, uh, uh, date rape kidnapped at knife point was very bitter I end up being a prostitute and a stripper and multiple addictions but I tell you what there's a Jesus that loves us that the, the devil has targeted us for destruction but Jesus has destined us to win that's why he died on the cross the blood the blood that was shed for you and me and you uh, 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 Laura Lee is because he wants us to be part of his family so if you'd like to say this prayer just say it after me and mean it with your whole heart, though. You just can't say it and go back to your old lifestyle. Be willing to let it go. Repent means turn. When you say it and repent, that's when the Holy Spirit comes in and gives you the power to live it. You can live the life. You can say no to alcohol and drugs. You can say no to sex because he wants you as part of his family. So you can not only have a, a peaceful life on earth with him, but also go to heaven and not hell because there really is a hell matter of fact i preached on that this morning here at this church hell is real and the devil's not dead but wonderful news is heaven is real and god's not dead so make him your god right now say jesus forgive me of my sins come into my heart i want to live for you i'm willing to leave the old lifestyle behind 
and follow you with my whole heart. Thank you for dying on the cross for me, for loving me. I love you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Hi, folks. I'm Daryl Teeter, Teeter's Chevrolet in Malvern. I hope you'll be buying a car or truck real soon. You need to consider coming to Malvern. We have a big selection to show you. We have Altimus, Avalons, Camrys, Buicks, Chevrolets, Cadillacs, whatever you need, plenty of trucks and SUVs of all kinds. We have a 14-mile Suburban Light New Passion Pro car for only $39.8. We have a 14-mile Impalas for $16.8. My, we've got a selection of everything. Come see us real soon. Teeter's in Malvern. We have a great service department, and we'll please you, so come see us. Friends, you know, I usually don't come and ask you for help, but we have recently become a nonprofit organization, uh, Addiction Free Ministry Incorporated, and we have a full board of directors. And so if you would like to make a, a monthly contribution or even a one-time contribution, we could really use your help. We would love you to become one of our recovery team partners. And no seed is too small, whatever God would lay on your heart. God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I.